Hello everybody, welcome back to the channel. It's time to draft yet again. I thought this one would be intriguing because of the fact that I have no idea what the championship team is gonna look like. Lowest salary cap, 48 teams. I am very curious to find out what that team looks like. I've done a regular 48 team draft. I've done a highest, lowest cap draft, but I've never combined them. So today we're gonna do that. Number of teams, you say, how about 48? Sounds good to me. Salary cap max. Let's go ahead and bring that down to the minimum. All right, we are ready to rumble. I thought I had a bunch of created teams on this account, but I don't. So we're gonna have to run with these guys for now and maybe I'll land on one of them. So let's go ahead, randomize and find out what team we get. And I'm gonna try to stop mid-sentence again. We get the Edmonton Oilers. Ah, uh, yes, I forgot about the custom divisions and conferences. No thank you to owner mode, fantasy draft, of course. Head coach edit lines, don't even think about it, Jabroni. Obviously, I want this to be on because I want all players to be available. Fog of War will be off. Play them around, no, okay. So I think we're good here, just have to turn off injuries. It's time to d -d 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 draft. Get it? It's like Yu-Gi-Oh, but hockey. Anyway, um, pick number seven, yes. Show me number seven. 24. Matthew Kachuk, they're gonna have to take a lot of budget picks from here on out. With the first overall, first round pick of the BK, I will be taking none other than the man, the myth, the legend, Tage Thompson, 1.4 million, 88 overall. Get on the team, lad. Jordan Kairou, another killer contract. He is 87 overall, 2.8. Let's go ahead and sign him up. I really don't wanna leave goalies. And I'm gonna go with Swayman, because he's making less than a million, and he is 85. So I think that that is very optimal, given the circumstances, you know? Brandon Montour, 3.5 is a pretty good deal. Alright, well, I think we're gonna be unreal. He does shoot left. Grizzlick. Montour's right-handed, right? I'm pretty sure he is, and I'm too lazy to go check. So I'm just gonna say that he does in fact shoot right. Hopefully those two can play together. We still have 26 million left. I want to take a left winger for that first line. I just don't know who I want it to be. I'm gonna take Vrana. That is not the best contract in the world at 85 overall, but you know, it kind of looks par for the course and it's good compared to others. So as a first line left winger, I'm willing to give you that. So we've got our core established now. We have the first line, our first defensive pair and a starting goalie. I don't know where I want to go from here. I'm just trying to find pretty good contracts, and Connor Brown's got an all-right one at 3.6. 84 overall, he could be the second line right winger. Yeah, I'm... It's gonna be tough to find, you know, players that are good overall and not making whole locks. I feel like the computer teams are gonna be doing the exact same thing. But you know what? I'm gonna do it better, and the BK are gonna win the Stanley Cup. Oh wow, we already only have 14k... 14k. If we had 14k left, we wouldn't have an NHL team. But yeah, we have 14 million dollars of cap left. That's kind of crazy, not gonna lie. Gustav Forsling, the man, the myth, the legend. At 2.6, who can say no? Not me, that's for sure. Give me a somewhat affordable right-handed defenseman. You shoot left. Yoki Haru just jumps right out at me. He's only 23 as well, not that it matters because it's franchise mode, well. It's franchise mode, so technically it does matter, but we're only doing one year, so Yoki Haru is going to be the selection for our second defensive pair. So our top four is solid. I need to get one more good left winger, and then it's budget picks from here on out. Robbie Fabry's a sniper. He's got 90 discipline. Big fan of that. Four-star shooting category. Making four million dollars. I have follows on the same deal. He's a two-way forward. I don't even remember who I took for the second line, but... I went with Robbie anyway. Are we even gonna be able, there's no way. We are gonna be over the cap. Well, I probably should have thought about that beforehand. Even if I take all league minimum players, we're still gonna be over the cap. I'll tell you what, I'll get rid of one of the players that I took so that we have a league minimum deal on our second line. And then we should be cap compliant at that point, I would think. But we didn't even really take any big contracts. Matthias Samuelson has a very good physicality category. Four and a half stars. 77 overall defenseman. His discipline's... Oh, it's actually 80. It's higher than I expected. Buddy Robinson. 74 overall. Four and a half star physicality. Making 750k. 
Welcome to the team. It took me way too long to find players making less than a mil, and I think I'm gonna go with Bogosian just because he's making 100k less. They're both right-handed defensemen with a four-star physicality. Yeah, let's go, Bogosian. The computers better abide by the salary cap because I'm literally cutting players from my team so that we can be cap compliant after this. Trevor Lewis, two-way forward, three-star physicality. Thought it'd be more than that. Little disappointed, but I'll still take you. So we have 800k with three picks remaining. Yeah, if I get rid of one player and put a league minimum deal, we should fall within the cap. Like, I know it's going to fix it for us, so I'll just have to make that judgment call, but in theory, I'm saying, you know, if we got rid of a player that was two mil, we would easily be able to sign. So yeah, we'll be okay. I just have no idea who I'm going to get rid of. That is the question. Wayne Train all day. I know he's making 1.4. But I still think we would kind of fall within the cap, no? Fine, I'll take league minimum, never mind. Well, not necessarily league minimum, but at least making less than a mil. Zach McEwen. So we're almost 2 million over right now. If I go to our drafted players, who can I get rid of? If I got rid of Connor Brown... So if I send Connor Brown down to the AHL... AKA, if I never selected him, we would have 1.7 million left. So technically... This works. Oh yeah, I forgot about this bug. It doesn't take you to your team. There we go. We drafted Wisdom. How can you go wrong? And we got Kessel. I'm terribly sorry, Connor Brown, but you have to play in the AHL. This hurts, but he's going down. Confirm. Who even is our AHL team anyway? It is... Nope. Mans is going to light it up down here. They wanted Kairou second line center, and I simply will not stand for that. We're going to have Verona, Thompson, and Kairou playing together. Again, if things are falling apart, I will come do best lines. But then we've got the Wayne Train playing with Jenner and Fabry, Cates, Lewis, and McEwen. I might actually... No, I won't. I'll leave Cates on the third line. That's all right. And then we've got Jumbotron playing with Keegan and Buddy. Actually, you know what? I'm going to move Jumbo up a line. We'll put Lewis on the fourth line. Defensively, we got Grizzlick and Montour, Yokiharu with Forsling, and then Matthias playing with Zatch. Swayman's the starting goalie. Helberg is the backup. Let's find out how this team sims. I wonder how a full franchise, you know, where you actually commit to multiple years with these rules would go. I can't envision that going very well. I'm not buying it. Did the other teams abide by the rules or no? All right, now we're talking. Five game win streak. Make it six. Oh, Columbus, come on. I don't like it. It's best lines time. Boone Jenner, point a game. Let's give the game what it wants. Head coach preferred lines. At least we got a plus one on the first and second line now. Well, coach knows best, I guess. We're on a four game winning streak. And once again, as soon as I even think to mention it, we take an L. 17 points ahead of us. What does their team look like? There really does seem to be, in each division I'm seeing anyway, one team that is just extraordinarily higher than the others. I feel like I'm playing NHL 14 again with these sim times. It's so slow. 34 dubs at the trade deadline. Let's go ahead, find out who's available at the trade deadline. I'll keep our block the way it is. David Pasternak. One year left at 6.6 .6 million. That's not bad at all. Troy Terry making 1.3, 89 overall. I'm tempted, you know. Oh, yeah. It's just not going to happen. No way. Horvat, Jesper Bratt. All right. Jari, I was going to take him, but then I went with Swayman instead. And I'm somewhat happy that I elected to go with Swayman because he's doing quite well, I think. These guys are right up against the cap as well, so yeah. Not even worth the effort. It's not going to happen. Surely we're playoff bound. That is a tremendous start to the post-trade deadline. You just don't see that very often anymore. Or ever, really. At least not on this channel. I don't know. Do you find that on other people's channels, the trade deadline, it just goes south from there every time? Or is it just me? I think we finished with 47 wins, which is very impressive considering our start was completely horrendous. Oh, never mind. We had 45 wins. I don't know where I pulled 47 from. So Lulea, I'm not even going to try. I'm just going to call them hockey. They took the division, custom division four, by 13 points. So they dominated. We had 96 and we finished third. Nothing too crazy. The 18th place, the Golden Knights made it. And if we go all the way down, I just want to see the team that finished last, what their roster looks like for science. You know, who was it? It was the Edmonton Oilers. Ha <laughs> ha. We are the better Oilers. They have Kachuk, Natchez, and Beckman. Besser on the second line. That's a bold strategy. 
Chikrin with Siegenthaler. And they have Dansk and Net. Okay. Yeah, they don't look great. Oh, the team that won our division also won the President's Trophy. So they had Kaprizov, Giroux, and Perot. Couturier on the second line. Lucius on the third line there as well. Dawson Mercer, Sonny Milano. Yeah, fair enough. They have a good team. Their defense is questionable, but they do have Arbor Jet guy, so it's immediately sick. Sorry, I mean Arbor Wi-Fi. How could I be so rude? Tage ended up point a game. And then we got Fabry with 78, Boone Jenner 75, the Wayne Train put up 70, and Kairou only put up 70. 128 penalty minutes from Zach. Love that from you. Man had 19 fights! 1-9! That has to be league leading, there's no way someone fought more than 19 times. Swayman did alright, 907, 262, he had a pretty good record, four shutouts, Helberg struggled mightily, but somehow still managed to have a winning-ish record. I mean, if you count overtime losses, then he's not overall above 500, but... Freddie Anderson led the league, you see what I see, also got 40 wins though, a 917 from Freddie, 245, an 897 from Capo, and he's still up there. And yeah, it looks like... Freddy really stole, st I don't know why, but my brain just had a massive fart. Anyway, before my brain decided it was time to flatulate, is that a word? Freddy Anderson definitely wins this year for goalies. 917, 245 seems to be the best, and he also had the most wins. Drew Doughty point a game, and then we got 81 from EK65 and Fox, who I think went one or two picks before us in the first round. John Carlson with 79 points as well. Hedman put up 76. Uh, yeah, I guess, you know what? It's just gonna be that there's more lower overall players because of the stipulation so the higher overall players are going to dominate i wonder what the forwards are gonna look like i stand corrected jake dotchen who apparently exists twice had 30 fights and 28 fights i wouldn't be surprised if he fought himself bradley ran away with it 134 points he had 94 assists and 40 goals nate mack had 55 tucks 67 from Kucherov. He wins the Rocket Richard. He had nine more than Ovi, who had 58. Tanner led forwards for fights with 21. So close, Zach. Oh yeah, well, McEwen put up 37 points. So how about that? It's playoff time. Let's see if we can do well or if we're gonna get rinsed. I'm gonna call a no sweep, but I could regret that decision. And it looks like I'm going to. Ha <laughs> ha! I will regret it. It's funny because the joke's on me. I've had it with this game, man. Every time! Every time! Okay, maybe not every time, but... A fair amount of- enough times to be upset. The Boston Bruins take home the Stanley Cup. I didn't see where they were in the standings, but I do want to find out what their team looks like. Attaboy, Cairo. He picked it up in the loss. Boston finished sixth, just shy of 100 points. They had 99. Zabenejad and Ovechkin on the first line, playing with Luff. They had Samsonov and Net. Anderson and Edler as the first pair. Gustafsson, Clendenning. Uh, okay, yeah, they do have a good team. Shane Pinto on the second line. It looks like they have Reader twice. Well, I don't know why players are duplicated. That must have to do with that setting that I turned on. We can have a look at the awards real quick here. There you go. And individually, Brad takes the Art Ross, as we saw. He also gets the heart. Norris goes to Carlson. Hughes with the Lady Bing. Perot gets the Calder Memorial, attaboy. Ovi gets the Con Smythe, Holpi with the Vesna. Freddy is- Oh! Wait, hold on. I thought he was gonna win both, but no, I guess not. Peg takes the Masterton home, Thorne with the Jack Adams, Barkov gets the Selkie, Marchie with the Ted Lindsay, and then as we saw, Cooch gets the Rocket Richard. Just in case anyone's curious, this is how we did in the playoffs, not good. Our goalie stats are probably horrendous, yeah. That's not a pretty sight. Samsonov did amazing. 15, 8, and 1. Well, I mean, he had a 900 save percentage. I wouldn't say he did amazing, but 917 is pretty solid, and so is a 923. Anderson led defenseman with 20 points. Drysdale's right there with 18. No wonder this guy got the consmite. 37 points in 25 games. Abenejad at 35. We got 30 from McDusty. And there is your playoff tree. So, that was... A draft, I'll tell you that much. We did end up making the playoffs, so I'm happy about that. After that start, I thought we were going to be the worst team in the league, and I really started to question whether or not the AI actually followed the rules, or if they went rogue. But no, they stayed within the limits by the looks of it. Well, anyways, thank you so much for watching. Thank you for the suggestion as well. And on that note, I will see you soon.